up family my name is Renisha welcome to Renisha space where I let others fight over the mic while I'm making social media my pulpit Woo! all I want to do is encourage you to be everything God has called you to be even when others don't agree so I may be looking a mess right now listen I was praying before I got on here and I was playing worship music and I was like Lord I don't want to ever get caught up in the likes the comments the shares the numbers like when I come on YouTube I want to come from a pure place so I was praying regarding that. The Lord spoke something that I'm going to tell you all at the end. And I just started crying, just a weeping mess. Had my tissue right here. And I'm just like, Lord, I'm going to get on this camera looking a mess. But it's okay. Um, happy Rosh Hashanah, everyone. If you don't know what Rosh Hashanah is, it's the Jewish New Year. It begins today. And I don't know about you all, but I am happy Whew, to be turning that leaf. And it feels, it feels different. Even when he spoke that word to me a few minutes ago, I'm like... Okay, like I, I can feel the weight of the word now. So I wrote the word this morning. I wanted to release it at a certain time. Did not make that time because I was working. But I have not watched any words, any prophetic words regarding the new year. I did that on purpose because some people will go watch words and then turn around and prophesy it like they came up with it. I didn't do all of that. After you hear this word, please go pray. It's probably, it should bear witness with your spirit, but if it doesn't, go pray, okay? But this is what he's saying to the body of Christ through me. Now, we know in part, we prophesy in part. As soon as I finish this and start editing, I'm going to pull up some other videos so I can see what he's telling everybody else for the new year. Not everybody else, but some people, you know, that I follow. And I'm sure some of this stuff is going to be repeated. Also, some of the stuff you've heard before, if you watch... If you watched my prophetic words from August and September, some of the stuff you've already heard. And I even had a friend who sent me a link to a prophetic word for the new year. And I messaged her right back. I said, I can't watch this yet because I haven't, even though I had it written down, I was like, I haven't released it or, or recorded it. So I don't watch want to watch anything until I record what the Lord told me directly. And Candace, please write in the comments and let these people know I'm not making this up. So, if you want to grab your Bibles, you don't have to. The first scripture he gave me was Isaiah 25 and 8, but I'm going to read the whole chapter of Isaiah. Let me tell you, when I asked the Lord a couple of weeks ago what he was saying regarding the new, the new year, all I heard was relief. And he said, there are people waiting on the government stimulus, but I'm about to come with a stimulus package. So this morning I heard two words, rest and relief, rest and relief, well, really before this morning, but after that he kept saying rest and relief, rest and relief, rest and relief. So I wrote down what he said. I'm going to give it to you all. This is not going to be long for real. I know I say this every time. Isaiah chapter 25. This is the scripture he gave me this morning. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. Oh Lord, you are my God. I exalt you. I will praise and give thanks to your name for you have done miraculous things. Plans formed long, long ago fulfilled with perfect faithfulness. For you have made a city into a heap of trash, a fortified city into a ruin. A palace of foreigners is no longer a city. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, a strong people will honor you. Cities of terrible and violent nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold for the helpless, a stronghold for the poor in his distress. A shelter from the storm, a shade from the heat. For the breath of tyrants is like a rainstorm against a wall. Like heat in a dry land, you will subdue the noise of foreigners, rejoicing over their enemies. Like heat in the shadow of a cloud, the song of tyrants is silenced. On this mountain, Zion, the Lord of hosts, will prepare a lavish banquet for all people to welcome his reign on the earth. A banquet of aged wines, choice pieces flavored with marrow, of refined aged wines. And on this mountain, he will destroy the covering that is cast over all peoples and the veil of death that is woven and spread over all nations. And verse eight specifically is what he spoke to me. He will swallow up death and abolish it for all time. And the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. And he will take away the disgrace of his people from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken and it shall be said in that day. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall be the hand. I'm sorry. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest. And Moab 
shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down from the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spread it forth his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down, lay low, and bring to the ground, even to the dust. I can't even make this up. This is the scripture he gave me regarding the word rest and relief. So I looked up the definition of rest. Rest means to cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. When I was writing this word this morning, I kept crying. Like I kept crying. And the reason I kept crying was because I felt God's heart. And so many you, so many of you are tired with this past year. You've been through so much. You're tired of hearing prophecies. You're tired of hearing words. And it seems like you're not seeing the manifestation. And it's going to be hard for you to even receive this. It's like your faith is dwindling in him. And that's why I kept crying this morning when, I'm, when I was writing this. But um, this is what he said. I believe... This ceasing from work is even a ceasing from warfare, and I believe this will be possible due to the fact that from March up until now, God has shifted our perspective. Many of us have realized that we are improperly engaging in a lot of wars anyway, because we are trying to play God and let, instead of allowing him to be God. Being that he has revealed this to many of us, we now know how to hold our peace while letting the Lord fight our battles. Another definition I love about rest, it says to be placed or supported so as to stay in a specified position. This quarantine was a reset for many of us to get back to or to get in the position to fulfill purpose. And this is why we're going to be able to rest. We will be resting in Yahweh's arms, his will, his timing, his position, and his purpose for our lives. So then I looked up the word relief. For relief, it said the removal or lightening of something, oppressive, painful, or distressing. One that takes the place of another on duty. Legal remedy. That was one of the words for relief. Legal remedy. The last time I checked, the Bible says that the government is on whose shoulders? Okay. I kept crying while writing this word out. Because so many of his children are tired and their faith is dwindling. But I promise you, and I don't make promises, but I promise God is about to show himself as El. He is the strong one. He's about to show himself as El Elyon. He is the most high God. I said in one of my recent videos that he will not be mocked. I just made a video. I don't know if it was last week. You all have to go back and listen at the last few prophetic words I released, but God just said he was talking about judgment that's coming. And he said that he would not be mocked. God is coming to relieve his people and not by the rapture either. I was going to do a separate video on this and I still might. But since we're here, let me read the scripture. Matthew 24. Because I've been hearing... I've been hearing some things. Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to read verse 36 through 39. I'm going to read it in the Amplified again. But of that exact day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son in his humanity, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man, the Messiah, will be just like the days of Noah, for as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the very day when Noah entered the ark. And they did not know or understand until the flood came and swept them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be unexpected judgment. And the reason I had to read that is because whew, there are so many of you out here anxious and I don't understand why you're out here anxious. You're about to have heart attacks. Because people are releasing dates saying the Lord is about to come back. Every time something bad happens and you can go back, you can go back many, many years. People, oh, the world is about to end. Jesus is coming back. 
I was on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple, maybe, yeah, about two weeks ago. And I made a comment on some video. And I was like, yeah, I was praying the other day and I saw the open heaven. And this lady commented, she was like, yeah, my daughter was outside and she said the same thing. And there's just so much happening. And she said, Jesus, why haven't you come back for your children yet? And I just shook my head. I just shook my head. I don't know why we're so stuck on rushing to heaven as if God doesn't have anything he wants us to accomplish on earth. Uh, what you need to do is realize that Jesus has been on his way back since he left. He has been. He's on his way back. We shouldn't get so caught up on the rapture, him coming back to get the church as a whole. And I know the rapture is not a biblical term, so you don't have to put that in the comments. I know. But I just want y'all to understand what I'm saying. We shouldn't get so caught up in him coming back as a whole to get us when he can come back to get us on any given day as individuals. We get so caught up in the world is about to end and this is happening. Oh my God, because we're never supposed to go through anything, right? The world is about to end, but you don't even love like you're supposed to. You're gossiping. You show no grace to others, but you're so, Jesus is about to come back. Come on, Jesus, come rescue us. Well, you better hope he delays his coming because do you want to make it to heaven? Because the way some of you all are living, and I'm not exempt, if he does come back right now, I'm not too sure you'll make it. So, yeah. And I don't want to go off on a tangent. But just don't get so caught up on people that are releasing these dates. Read your Bible, y'all. Just read your Bible. Read your Bible. Back to the Word. I've done videos about God's glory covering the earth. I believe the tables have turned. The church is about to demonstrate the power of God like never before. We are about to receive heaven's stimulus. Yes, even literal money. He is putting land, houses, cars, buildings, etc. on sale for his people. Let me say this. Be mindful of how you label people as false prophets because they talk about money, houses, and cars. Tell a mom that can't feed her children that money isn't important. Tell people who are out here sleeping in their cars that God doesn't prophesy concerning homes. Tell the people that are lying on the streets, sleeping on the ground, that wish they had a car to sleep in, that Jesus doesn't care about cars and houses. I've always had a huge heart to help people. I want transitional homes for the homeless, mental health centers with a Christian edge for people to get free, healing homes, etc. I can't do any of this without money. We have to stop being ignorant and remember that God has never been broke. If you don't want the money that heaven is about to release for you, do me a favor, ask him to redirect it to my bank account, and I'm so serious. Okay, he's coming with rest. He's coming with relief. We are about to see his glory like never before. You all, some of you are about to get phone calls. You're about to get emails. You're about to get offers where you're going to think, you're going to think it's it's a it's a scammer. You have to use your discernment. You're going to think somebody pranking you. I'm so serious because of what he's about to do. That's so great. I'm telling you, if this doesn't happen within the next year, please come back, share this video all over your social media and tell people I'm a liar. That's how serious I am. He's bringing rest and he's bringing relief. Even when, right before I got on and I was praying, um, I heard two things. Whew, and I'm not going to cry. I heard two things for us. And this also goes with the, the prophetic word. I heard carry the torch and I heard raise the dead. I promise you all this year is going to be different I have prophesied some things yes for the world it's gonna be some hard times it's going to get bad it's going to get worse but he said the only safe place is going to be in his glory for his people 
we are going to prosper, we are going to rule, and we are going to reign like never before. A lot of times we tend to ask, a lot of times we tend to ask God, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. When, it's, when we we're talking about old moves and things that he's done in the past, but before I got on here, he was like, I don't want to do it again. I want to do something new. So yeah, hoo, hoo, hoo. we need to carry the torch of those that went before us, but we can't get caught up in what they did. He wants to do something so much bigger. There's a video going around on Facebook right now. I'm sorry, on social media right now where this lady had her baby laying in her chest and the baby died and she was just praying. She was just praying and she prayed until that baby came back to life. And when I shared that video, I said, Jesus never stopped raising the dead. We did. And I don't apologize for it. And you don't have to agree with it. That's fine. But I'm not going to let your faith lessen mine, shrink mine, make me hold back. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I've been silent long enough. And if you don't like what I'm saying, feel free to exit stage left. But we're about to raise the dead once again. So that is the word that I have for the new year. I hope it blessed you all. Um, I'm just going to pray really quick. And I'm going to get it uploaded. Make sure you all subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Share it with someone. Let me know if the Lord has been telling any of you some of this stuff I said. Um, if he gave you a word for the new year, put it down in the comments. And I'm going to go check out some videos that some other people have made. Whew, but I can feel like I feel the mantle. This feels different. This feels different. Even let me know if your spirit um, bears witness with anything I said. So God, we just love you. Holy Spirit, we are so grateful for you. You are amazing. You are amazing. We thank you for releasing this prophetic word for Rosh Hashanah. Lord, we believe and we receive your rest. We receive heaven's relief. We receive heaven's stimulus package, oh God. I pray for these people even now that they their faith fails not. I pray that their faith and fire is even reunited in them even now in the name of Jesus. Those that have lost their fervor, those that have lost their push, oh God, rabanso, rebeshe alabanso, ya rebeshe alabanso, those that have been tossed to and fro. It's like I see, oh, I don't have anything. It's like I see, I don't even know what it's called something shaped like this with somebody standing on it and just rocking rocking back and forth you can't even get stable because your faith is so shaky because of what has happened to you not just in this past year but period i just pray that your faith is reignited after this video i pray that you start crying out to god again he's heard you the whole time he heard you on the first day don't believe the lie don't believe Satan. So he has never left you. The Bible says that if you make your bed in hell, God is still going to be there. There's absolutely nothing you can do to make him leave you. Even those of you that are bound by condemnation, be free. The Lord has need of you. The master has need of you. I can't think of the scripture, but some of you all may know it. When, um, when Jesus sent the disciples to go get the donkey and they were basically like what are we going to say and he said tell them that the the master has need of him i can't remember the exact scripture but the master has need of you he has need of you yeah he doesn't care about what you did repent and move on he has need of you now is the time so many of you that have been ignored and pushed in the on the back burner and people thought you were crazy for saying certain things it's your time now so don't let the enemy play with your mind I just pray that you all start believing in God again because many of you whether you want to admit it or not you don't even believe anymore you're so disappointed you're so hurt it's like well I'm just I'm used to things not working out so whatever I know she's speaking this but whatever I pray that you believe again. Believe again. Even breathe again is what I hear. The word says 
when I saw you polluted in your own blood, I commanded you to live. Holy Spirit is commanding you to live right now. He's commanding you to live. Even after you turn off this video, go, if you're able to, just go get on the floor, get on your bed, stand up, walk around, whatever, and just pray. Cry out to God. He's waiting on you. He's waiting for you to come back home. Don't let condemnation whoo, handicap you. And that's what it does. That's what it does. So, whew, I even bind backlash and demonic retaliation. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. I cover my family and I cover my friends in Jesus' blood even now. I love you all. Happy Rosh Hashanah. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all of that good stuff. Love y'all. I do want to offer the opportunity for someone who is not saved to give their life to Christ. I remember, I can't remember, I don't know what year it was, but I was talking about how we were going to evangelize the internet. We don't have to be in a church. We are the church. I think that's the issue um, for all these years. We've been so busy and so consumed with being in the church that we didn't Focus on the fact that God wants us to be. He wants us to be the church, not just be in a building. Okay, so I'm going to read the scripture to you. I know growing up in church, sometimes they make it extremely difficult as far as getting saved. Listen, Jesus is deep. God is deep. There is so much depth to him, but getting saved, it is not that deep. It's not as deep as they make it. I got you. Romans 10 and 10. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. You know, you can find whatever version you prefer. I know I grew up on King James, so I'm a King James baby. But I grew up in church. A lot of people coming into salvation, they would not be able to get with King James. So this is a new Bible I have. It's King James and Amplified. My old Bible was King James. And I also have the Bible app on my phone where I use multiple. Um, I do multiple versions like about four or five that I cross-referenced. So yeah, I'm just going to read it from the Amplified because I think it'll help you understand better how simple this is. So Romans 10 verses 8 and 9. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis of faith which we preach. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's just that easy. So, if you desire to accept Christ into your heart, repeat this prayer after me. And I'm actually going to use the prayer in my book, Mental for Manifestation. So, when I wrote this book, and I'm probably going to do a separate video about it, I honestly wrote it for people who were not saved. And it's crazy, right? Because it's a book about prayer and fasting. But I wrote it for the unchurched, for people that weren't saved and things like that. I'll explain it later. But I'm going to read this prayer. Just repeat it after me. Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe that you came in the flesh and died for my sins. I believe you rose from the grave and ascended back into heaven. I also believe that you are coming again and I want to be prepared for your return. I repent now for all my sins. Please forgive me for all unrighteousness. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I accept you into my heart right now, Jesus. And I believe that I am saved by grace through faith. Listen, if you pray that prayer, you are now saved. Okay, okay. I'm talking about names just in the Lamb's Book of Life. Honey. So yeah, congratulations on taking this step. I actually have this written in here. Congratulations on taking this step and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm so proud of you. You need to find a Bible-based church. Okay, so church was actually open when I wrote this two years ago, but... Find a community, okay? Find some friends, find a church online or something that can help you in your next steps such as discipleship and deliverance. Community and accountability are essential elements in this Christian walk. So yeah, that's awesome. If you prayed that prayer, 
put it in the comments. Let me know that you gave your life to Christ. Call somebody, bless it on social media. Like, y'all, guess what? I got saved today. That is lit. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. One more thing. If you have prayer requests, my email is below. So you can drop prayer requests, even if you're, especially if you're like a new Christian and you're like, Renisha, I don't know what the heck to do, where the heck to go from here. Email me down below. All right. Bye for real now.